Robert Owen. Um, he's got money. What's he do with it? Uh, he invests in socialism. Uh, he's a capitalist. He's a socialist. He's Robert Owen, founder of New Lanark in England, New Harmony in the United States. Um, stuff you might remember from AP U.S. history or stuff you will learn fairly soon. Um, uh, this is like the 18 teens, right? So Marx publishes Capital in 1867. Um, um, Proudhon and the French utopian socialists are just before Marx, right? 18, you know, 40s, 50s, revolutionary socialist movements of the 1840s in Germany. Um, this is 1817. So this is a long time before the more mainstream understandings of socialism. Just to get a sense, right? Because we generally think of, oh, socialism, we think of Marx or whatever. Um, here's a, we'll look at a larger tree here. Um, this is a chart of all the different kinds of socialism there are from market socialism on the far right. And that would be more like what Robert Owen is into. Um, Fabianism, regional socialism, anarchism is a kind of socialism. Um, Marxism in the center, Taylorism, utopian socialism, religious socialism. Um, and they all have their subdivisions. Um, so there's a lot to choose from. And Robert Owen is kind of one of the weird ones. And we'll, uh, let's talk about him. He is a, um, a liberal socialist. So again, he's writing at a time period where they're just kind of figuring out how to do stuff that isn't mercantilism. Um, the Industrial Revolution is just, is just beginning. And for the most part, if you're a, a factory owner in England, what do you care? Right? All of the Peasants have been kicked off of the land because of enclosure. Some of them have been shipped to the United States. Um, uh, some of them are just roving around looking for work. You employ them, you know, they get crushed. So what? You get another one, right? They're cheap, right? They're, 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 um, it's not slavery, but certainly the conditions are extremely dangerous. The wages are extremely low. It's your factory. You don't like it? Go hire, you know, go, go hire out somewhere else. Um, Robert Owen says that maybe this isn't a good idea. So he's a liberal socialist. He wants progressive change. He wants to work within the system. He's not a revolutionary socialist, right? He's not Marx. He's not Lenin. Um, he's not a utopian socialist. Uh, he is not trying to, um, he, I mean, New Lenark is to some degree a kind of utopian model for what factories can look like, but he's not trying to make some commune out in the middle of nowhere and live on socialist principles, right? He, he wants to reform working conditions. He wants to reform education. In some ways, he's a nature versus nurture guy because at a time period where a lot of people are saying, you know, these poor people are just poor because they're poor <laughs> and they're lazy because they're lazy because they're poor. Um, very much it's their nature to be poor. And I'm a hard worker because I'm an aristocrat and I was born into a you know, I was born with a silver spoon and I've never had to do anything in my life except I went to, you know, Eton in Oxford or whatever. Um, right. Robert Owen says no way. Right. He says that nurture is a part of it and he wants to show that it works. So he's a socialist and he's a capitalist. Um, he makes uh, New Lenark. He invests in it. He buys out his competitors, I think, in 1817. And he creates a model for education, for work reform. Um, this is the first nursery school in Britain. Is it New Lanark? Uh, Robert Owen comes up with the phrase eight hours for labor or labor, uh, eight hours for recreation, eight hours for rest. Uh, this is the clarion call of labor movements from the mid 19th century to today, right? Eight hours of work, eight hours for leisure, eight hours for sleep. Right. That is a Robert Owen. He did that. Right. So a kind of capitalist um, did this. So, again, when it's 1817, when we say socialism, the bar is pretty low here. Right. It's like not having your workers get killed. Um, not, uh, you know, we want to have men and women working in the factory. And if the women are there, what are you going to do with their kids? Let's send them to nursery school. It'll be part of the wage. Right. You don't have to pay for it. Not so radical. Um, but in the time period, he is considered, these are kind of radical ideas because you're wasting your money, 
right? So what? You know, a kid gets crushed, you just get a new one. Um, Robert Owen, uh, and there's some more nefarious stuff going on. He's got this kind of color-coded device that incentivizes work um, uh, or working well. So it's not all, you know, utopian. Um, but it's pretty radical right for the time period and this is again this is one of these things where when you you know people say like oh you know socialism has failed everywhere um it's ever been tried it's like it's also been successful everywhere it's been tried um, work reform shorter work days uh working conditions um health care not in this country not in the united states but in the rest of the developed world um health care I mean, these are all things that came out of capitalist responses to the problems in capitalism, right? The capitalism had some major issues and they incorporated, right, the, the, the opposing position so well that they really kind of diffused it in some, in some, uh, to some degree. Okay, 1830s, 1820s, he sells shares in New Lanark. He publishes what he's doing. Uh, Jeremy Bentham, utilitarian, is into it. Um, he goes to the United States, founds New Harmony in 1825. Doesn't really work out. Um, it is one of the first socialist ideas to come to the United States. He actually meets with, um, uh, uh, I think he meets with Jefferson. Um, he meets with some, like some prominent uh, American founding fathers. Um, and uh, he may also in 1830... Um, I don't know if he met with the president or not, but he, he comes to the United States and he's right, goes on a big tour and tries to sell it. New Lanark is su successful in England. New Harmony never gets off the ground in the United States. Uh, he returns to England and founds what is called the National Equitable Labor Exchange, which is effectively an early form of time based currency or time exchange. So, oh, and again, as I harp on all the time in A Push. Um, wages are things that people are super happy with. Um, you can pay people more money and that's good, but Owen is experimenting with different forms of um, economy and uh, exchange. And one that he comes up with, well, not him alone, but in this um, National Equitable Labor Exchange, is the idea of a time-based currency. Um, so, right, um, I I do, and they have time exchanges. I don't know if they have them in Orange County, but they have them in Long Beach. They have them in, in L.A. Um, they're called time exchanges, and they're just that time-based currency where if um, I speak Spanish or I teach a push, right, uh, and I can tutor someone uh, in for the AP exam or whatever, and I do it for X amount of hours, I put those that money into the kind of bank, as it were, and I can get another service from someone else. So I need to get gardening done or I need, you know, some I need someone to fix a screen door or whatever. And they we t exchange not money, but time. Um, this is a time based currency or a time exchange. And it's something that Robert Owen is playing with in the 1830s. Right. So pretty interesting, progressive guy reminds us that socialism and capitalism are not always antithetical. Revolutionary socialism. Sure. Right. Um, um, radical kind of Marxism. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of the idea uh, is that it's antithetical to capitalism. But there's all kinds of, you know, socialist socialism light. And they go way back right to the 18 teens um, of just ways to make your workforce happier uh, more productive, um, and uh, not dead. Uh, so that is Robert Owen. We can talk more about the specific kind of point by point by point by point by point things he does in the reading in class. Um, but that is it. 10 minutes. Bye.